The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Over 50 years ago, Johnny Erickson Tata suffered a terrible accident that left her paralyzed. I would tell my mother, close the drapes, turn out the light, shut the door, and just leave me alone. Randy, after a while, I just began to get tired of feeling sorry for myself. You know, woe is me, poor me, everything happens to me. I got tired of it. Discovering so the joy of dwelling in the presence of Jesus, next. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Tammy Trent is with Hello. me. Tammy, you just spoke with Johnny for the first time, right? Yeah, like I've met her before. Yeah. Said hi. What do you think? I have loved her since I was a teenager, yeah. have loved her. But now, at this time in my life, to get a chance to meet her and talk to her personally, like have that kind of one-on-one, -on -one, it's special because she is so special, she Randy. Is. She yeah. is, and she has blessed so many of our viewers that she is going to bless you today. I'm talking about Johnny Erickson Tata. She has a new book called The Practice of the Presence of Jesus, Daily Meditations on the Nearness of Our Savior. And the depth in this is, it's just, it's another level, right? You read through some of the, right? I mean, Randy, it is. It's, it's such a beautiful devotion. And honestly, when I was reading the depth, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, I almost sometimes had to read, read them more than once. Sometimes you read a devotion and think, I got it, great. But yeah. I, there was so much to unpack in every one. And they're short, but yes. they're meaningful. Okay, so we, we got to get to this. I want you to hear this. Johnny, welcome to Life Today. Good to be with you, Randy, and you too, Tammy. I'm, I'm glad you like the book. What can I say? Well, no, really. And, you know, we get these books all the time. And so, you know, we look through them sometimes just for preparation. You know, but sometimes you start, you know, preparing and you're not prepared. <laughs> and you go, <laughs> whoa, wait a minute. Let me read that again. And it starts to minister to you. What, I'm curious because you're basing a lot of this or a lot of this was inspired by a guy named Brother Lawrence. And I didn't know who that was. Tell our audience who that is and why he inspired you. Well, back in the 60s, there was a book called The Practice of the Presence of God, written by a Carmelite monk named Brother Lawrence back in the 1600s, who came to Christ and made his way to a French monastery where he was relegated to scrubbing uh, floors and pots and pans and latrines. But he invited God to be in the, in the presence of his menial tasks, his day-to-day -day tasks. And when I read that in high school, and we're talking about the 1960s, it really touched me. Now, I put that book away on my shelf, but during COVID, of course, all of us were sequestered, so we pulled off of our shelves all the books we wanted to reread, right? And I reread that little book, and I thought, oh, this is the way I live my life, except I practice the presence of Jesus. And so that inspired me to put down on paper the things that I have learned over five and a half decades of, uh, of living life as a quadriplegic without use of my hands or my legs. I'm in a wheelchair. You can't see that. But, and I thought it might help other uh, readers um, engage Christ in the middle of their ordinary tasks, how to practice the presence of Jesus Christ on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, really, sometimes even moment to moment, and it's been a thrill to write it. Johnny, how, how do you do that? Like if, if I was going to talk to a friend that just is struggling with a lot of things and life is just really hard and they don't even know how to connect with God in the hard times, what practical thing would you say to someone that says, I, I want to know how to do that, but I, I, don't, I don't know what it means or how to even step into that? Well, it takes a little bit of courage to do it, a little bit of boldness. And Tammy, let me give you an example. Uh, this year was a rough year for me. I experienced uh, more than 45 days of hospitalization because of two different bouts with double pneumonia. Yeah. In fact, if our, our viewers can hear some gravelly uh, sound in my voice, my lungs uh, are significantly diminished. And so while I was in the hospital, um, I realized 
this isn't a detour. This isn't an interruption from my otherwise uh, ordinary day. This is the main road. God wants me here yes. for his mission. Yes. And so as all of us Christians should do, we look around us and see what is God up to? Who needs a touch of his grace? Who might need encouragement? So Tammy, when uh, hospital aides or cafeteria ladies would bring in the food tray or when janitors would come in the room or when, uh, okay, here's an example. At 4 a.m., uh, the people from the blood lab come, right? Yeah. And they wake you up, turn on the lights, and they're drawing blood. And as this woman was drawing blood, I look at her and say, you know, there is a proverb written about you. And she looks at me askew. Yeah, it says in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, it says, blessed is he who is kind to the needy, for he honors God. Mm. I said, ma'am, you are honoring God right now because I'm pretty needy and you are blessing me by helping me get better. And she looked at me, put down her needle and said, thank you for that. I said, well, I love Jesus and I just want to bless your day as it gets started at 4 a.m., yeah. That's the way to practice the presence of Jesus. Yes. As I said earlier, it takes a little bit of courage. Mm. It takes some boldness. Yeah. But you got to put your spiritual antennae up, open your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your heart, and look around, see who has a need, yeah. and then just make Christ real to them. I, I know you'd agree, right? Oh, 100%. <laughs> and I think the confirmation to know that one, we heard from God and we responded to Him is when that person says, gosh, I really needed that. Like you have no idea how much I needed that today or I was specifically praying for this and you just gave me the answer. Well, we know God gave the answer, but I think in my spirit, when I listen and I hear the voice of God and I respond to Holy Spirit's instruction, it does something in my faith um, as a believer. And I think that's what you're saying as well. Like be bold in it, be courageous in it, step out into those moments and keep growing in your faith because there's great purpose in it. Not only are you blessing them, but God is growing you and blessing your life as well. I love Absolutely. that. And I don't even think this woman knew Christ. Wow. But the fact that I sprinkled a little bit of gospel seed yes. is a way that we can make unbelievers hungry yes. and thirsty for the living water. Mm. Otherwise, they don't even know they're thirsty. They don't even know they're hungry. They don't even know they've got an appetite for God. But as soon as you sprinkle a little bit of gospel seed, a little bit of the Bible with a smile and with sincerity and yes. integrity of heart, I think it, it impregnates their stony hearts and gives them an awareness that I'm missing something. I want what this girl has in her life. Yes. So I, I call it uh, pea shooter evangelism. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not given the whole gospel, not the four spiritual laws, but it's making people hungry for God. Yes. I like that. I like that a lot. I, it, it, instead of, you know, let's guilt them into church, let's give them a tasty appetizer so they yes. want more. Right. Okay. I like that. Absolutely. Now, I, I have to ask you this. And, and John, Johnny, for people who don't know your story, how old were you when you had that diving accident that left you uh, paralyzed? I was 17 years old, Randy, and I just celebrated my 74th birthday. <laughs> no. That uh, is, no. Uh, That's amazing. Oh, yeah. let, me put, let me put the math together. That's, um, <laughs> that is 56 years in my wheelchair. Mm. And Randy... Tammy, I shouldn't be sitting up like this in a wheelchair. I told you guys earlier before we went live, I said, when I got up this morning, first thing, as soon as I sit up in my wheelchair, I said to my husband, this is a miracle. I can't believe I get to sit up in a wheelchair and look at life from a 90 degree head on angle. Because friends, I am so keenly aware that there are so many people who are quadriplegics, who are bedridden. Mm. They have infections, they can't get up and about. And I happen to be one who can. So even though my hands don't work and my feet don't walk, there just are more important things in life than walking. And one of them is just knowing Christ and making him real throughout your day, such as I just described in that hospital. Has he always felt near to you? Oh no, of course not. <laughs> I was so I was so depressed. I was so angry at God. I was so resentful mm -hmm. when I was first injured. But finally, after lying in bed in my room uh, for about six weeks, I would tell my mother, close the drapes, turn out the light, shut the door. 
and just leave me alone. Randy, after a while, I just began to get tired of feeling sorry for myself. You know, woe is me, poor me, everything happens to me. I got tired of it. And so I started listening to a couple of friends who with their Bibles would open up to scriptures like, uh, like um, okay, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks. Mm. And then Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Um, do everything without grumbling. Is it possible? Can we really do that? Yeah. Well, the Bible thinks so. <laughs> so I realized that I've got to either believe my sad circumstances and my what was me emotions, or I'm going to believe God. Mm. And Randy, at some point, I just decided to believe God and start memorizing scripture, start living it out, start believing it, and, and welcoming Jesus into my everyday moments. There's something else you say about self-pity in your book, and I want to ask you about that because I thought it was powerful. You, you say, you tell another story, more recent one, uh, where, where self-pity tried to creep in a little bit, and you started, in your words, rehearsing your identity who you are in Christ. Yeah. And I thought, wow, what a way to turn things around when we're feeling sorry for ourselves or anxious or a lot of these other things. This, this idea of rehearsing your identity to me is very powerful. Explain that if you would. Oh, absolutely. When I get discouraged and down, I, I rehearse who I am, who I am in Christ. Because I, I don't want to be the Johnny I was yesterday. Mm. That's the old Johnny. Mm -hmm. I want to be a different Johnny today, a fresher Johnny, a more alive, spiritually awake Johnny. And so I rehearse that my conversation is in heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All things work together into a pattern of good for me. And, and probably the best truth to memorize is that I am, without Christ, a junkyard dog nasty sinner. <laughs> and, and, and it is my sins that impaled the Son of God to a tree, ripped him to shreds. And so I dare not cling to self-pity, resentment, grudges, whatever, bitterness. I dare not cling to the very things which crucified my Savior. Mm. And besides Randy and Tammy, I, I want to I live for Christ because I want to enlarge my eternal estate. Yeah. I mean, everything we do down here on earth as Christians either enlarges our eternal estate or it diminishes it. Mm -hmm. And I want to have a, a big capacity in heaven for joy and worship and service of my Lord Jesus. Yeah. And every time I trust him, I'm stretching my soul and I am increasing my joy in heaven. And I, I don't want to diminish that. I don't want to waste that. Yeah. I, I want to come visit the Johnny Erickson Tata Ranch. <laughs> yes. <in, in> <laughs> It'd just be like Texas size in yes. heaven. Yes. Right? Oh. Me too. Johnny, your book means so much to me, this devotion. It's got over a hundred different devotions in this book. My eye was drawn. It kept it was it kept going to this one devotion and I, I kept thinking this is crazy, but every time I'd open it up, I don't know why my eyes kept going to this. But it was twenty eight uh, goodness and suffering. And 27, blessed are those who suffer. And I could relate so much just to the word suffering I relate to. It's hard. Suffering is hard. Life is hard. Um, we know God is good in it, but it's still hard. And there are so many people even watching today that just, man, they want to practice the presence of God. They want to trust God. They don't want to suffer. And I think of your life and I just think of how much suffering, well beyond what I have gone through becoming widowed. Uh, you have gone through so much more than I could ever imagine. And trusting God also is one of those, those devotions in here that touched me so much. And it's, it's, a, it's like a daily thing for me that I have, to, I have to choose to keep trusting God because I don't have all the answers. And, and you talk about that. And, and I loved, I wrote this down because it just kind of, it just made sense to me. The instant you recognize God is a refuge for us. He is a refuge. He is right there and you face nothing alone. Psalm 62, 8, trust him at all times. 
Have you found that to be an anchor for you, just learning to trust God? Is that a secret oh, that we yes. just need to have in our lives to get through yes, some yes. of the suffering? Yep, and you mentioned a great Bible verse that all of us should memorize. It's so short. Psalm 62, verse 8, trust in the Lord at all times, not sometimes or when it feels easy to trust him or occasionally trust him, trust him all times. And Tammy, for our friends watching, let, let me explain how I do this at least. Um, I deal with neuropathic pain and it's excruciating. Uh, there's nothing that really touches neuropathic pain. And sometimes Tammy at night when I am in bed, and I can get anxious and fearful and claustrophobic because I'm paralyzed. I can't reposition myself in bed. And I feel pain encroaching. And I know it wants to crush me. But immediately I start talking to my pain because suffering's not going to go away. Uh, it, it's just there. Yes. And so I start talking to it and I say, pain, you're, you're going to try to crush me. But Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 says, though I am hard pressed on all sides, I am not crushed. Amen. You cannot crush me. Amen. So pain, I'm going to walk into the middle of you. Yes. I'm not going to be afraid of you or be anxious about you. Yeah. I'm going to walk into the middle of you as though I were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego yes. walking into the fiery yes. furnace. And I expect to see Jesus in the middle of you, pain. Hallelujah. And, and, and what do you know? I mean, as I walk into that pain calmly, breathing slowly, I find that Christ has gone ahead of me into it, and he has transformed it into a place of incredibly intimate encounter with him. Wow. There's nothing more heavenly yes. than finding Jesus in the middle of your most hellish circumstances. Mm -hmm. To find Jesus in your hell is so heavenly. And that's what you're and doing so, in that moment, Johnny. You're practicing yeah. the presence of God, calling out on him. But the, another yeah. secret to all of this is scripture. Like, that's why we always talk about memorize scripture, know scripture, because it's a weapon. It is a weapon against the lies of the enemy in those moments that you feel the darkness coming over you. You've got to know and be fully equipped so that you can speak to those things and change that atmosphere rather than that atmosphere changing you. What an inspiration you are to me to continue to memorize scripture, know the word of God so that in those moments you can speak them into your life. You know, exactly, Tammy. And another way to do it, uh, to get through suffering is to serve. Mm. I mean, look at the Lord Jesus. Yeah. There he is impaled on a cross. And what is he doing at his point of death? He's serving others. Yeah. He's serving the thief next to him. He is serving the Roman soldiers by his example. He is serving his mother, saying, John, here is your mother. Uh, mother here is now the one you're going to be living with from here on out. I mean, he is serving even at his point of greatest suffering. And so besides scripture, which is preeminent and supreme, serving others. Yeah. And Tammy and Randy, I want to do everything I can to squeeze every ounce of effort yes. out of this paralyzed body that I can't serve to serve others. It's why I have this ministry called Johnny and Friends where yeah. we deliver wheelchairs mm -hmm. all over the world and Bibles. We've delivered hundreds of thousands of wheelchairs and Bibles and the gospel. And can I show you something that I'm really, really excited about? Yes, yes. yes. This is a wonderful little wheelchair mm. that we developed at Johnny and Friends called the Cub Wheelchair. It's got detachable, adjustable desk arms, the back elongates, the feet uh, pedals go down. It has chest supports. It has chest uh, head supports. It, it, it just has a, a wonderful third wheel that you can attach for rough terrain on rocky paths and dirt villages. So I want to wake up in the morning, Tammy. Mm. I want to remember the world's millions of children with disabilities yes. who have nothing. I have everything. Yes. But they have nothing. And God calls all of us to get dressed, take a shower, go out the front door yes. and find somebody who's hurting worse than yes. you are mm -hmm. and serve them, make yes. their life easier, make their life better. So this is what I do with these little wheelchairs. The team at Johnny and Friends and I deliver thousands of them all around the world. And, and we give the gospel because, hey, what good is it if we make somebody comfortable in a wheelchair, but they don't know Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, I wow. love it. I love the heart oh, of that. Oh my goodness, um, I do and too. And if you want to help with that, please do. But we'd also like to send you uh, Johnny's book today. When you support 
another outreach. Uh, a lot of great outreaches. You just do what God puts on your heart. But there are opportunities all around us. We want to show you one today where you can serve and you can reach someone with the love of Christ. Watch this. Water is essential for life. But when there is no choice other than drinking contaminated water, lives are put at risk. It is a known fact that 800 children under the age of five die every day from diseases linked to unsafe drinking water, poor sanitation, or poor hygiene. As you can see, it's very busy here right now. Everybody's coming down. There's jugs lined up everywhere. They're getting water. You'll see them sweep sometimes the water with these big cans, trying to clear off the surface. But the reality is they can't clear away what's underneath. This happens every day, not just in this place, but in places around the world. And though it looks like we have a beautiful lake of water behind us, the reality is it's contaminated water. Children are dying right here in this village because this water, which is their only water supply, carries diseases, waterborne illnesses. You wonder why they're doing it? It's their only choice. If they had a choice to drink water that was clean, uncontaminated, that wouldn't potentially make them sick, or, or kill them, they would make the choice to drink the clean water. Help us give as much clean drinking water to as many people as we can, as many beautiful children. When we give them the choice of clean water, we give them life. I love seeing them dancing under that, that uh, rig that we're, we had just drilled a well in that one village at the end, but in that earlier spot, you know, it, Tammy, it's crazy because we drove kind of down the side of the mountain and you could see this beautiful, look like a beautiful lake, yeah. but the closer and closer we got, the more we saw, man, this yeah. is not good. Mm -mm. In fact, what's here will kill them. Uh, and, and in so many cases, we found out by talking to mothers that, that they had lost many, many children. And she so go, okay, well, even in the places where we think they have drinking water, they, what do we do? Well, the answer is water for life. It's drinking water that is not contaminated by going down into God's earth and pulling up what he has given and blessing people with it. Here's the breakdown, just so you know what it looks like. Uh, as we go uh, into about 20 nations around the world, and, we hope to reach our goal of 350 wells this year, maybe exceed it, I'm praying. The breakdown is that the average well costs $4,800. And there's some variation in there, depending on the terrain, depending on how remote it is, depending on how far we have to drill down into the earth. But the average cost for the program is $4,800. That means $4,800 will provide, on average, one well, which on average will serve about 1,000 people for about 70 years. Now, for most people, that's a lifetime. That's why we say it's water for life. Now, many of you are not in a position to be able to provide one well, but you can join others. Your gift of $144 today will help give water for life to 30 people. Most of you could give $48 to help provide water for life for 10 people. Here's what you need to know. Every single child, even the men and the women that are there at that contaminated water source, they're at risk. They need an answer to a prayer, and you are that answer. And that's why, Tammy, I think it's critical that we just do what we can. When we all work together, Absolutely. we can change it. Randy, I couldn't have said it any better than that. I mean, you laid it out. We always lay it out. Here it is. We present it to, to you and tell you this is the need and this is what we need and how we need to help meet this need for these people. That would change everything for them. I love how you talked about the celebration, the dancing. <laughs> I've been there in Burundi as well, and I've danced with the people. But it'd be incredible to go back into that village and put a well in for those 
incredible families for those children and to dance with them. Mm -hmm. That's what my goal is. That's what my hope is. That's what my dream is. That's what my prayer is. And I'm asking you, we are asking you today, would you come alongside us? Yeah. Would you come alongside us today? And let's get it done. Go online, make that call, give the best gift you can today, and let's make a difference in the lives of so many people all around the world. Every day, thousands of lives are lost to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children under the age of five. Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children a gift of $48 will help provide for 10, $72 will provide for 15, and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With a gift of any amount, we'll send you Daughter, written by James and Betty's granddaughter, Lainey Renee. This insightful book invites all girls and women to walk in the freedom of their God-given identity and embrace who they really are. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request the Great is the Lord decorative blanket, featuring the words of Psalm 145.3. This beautiful blanket is perfect for comfort in cold weather and a reminder of your help with Water for Life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and request our new bronze sculpture, A Cup of Water, inspired by Jesus' words in Mark 9.41. Please call, write, or make your gift online. We really can make a difference together. I hope you'll go online or go to the phone and make the best gift you can. And if you want Johnny's book, uh, it is called the, the Practice of the Presence of Jesus. And I promise it will bless you. Just request that today. But thank you most of all for, for helping. And Johnny, boy, what, a, what an honor to be able to serve God by serving others. Oh, absolutely. And it's what God tells us to do in 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning with the 10th verse. Each of you should take the gift that God has given you and use it in his service. So there you go. Wake up tomorrow morning, go out the front door and serve. You have been a great teacher of serving others. Oh my goodness, no matter what our circumstances are, there's always a moment that we can love, that we can be kind, that we can serve somebody for the love of Jesus, just showing them the love of Jesus. I love you, Johnny. I'm so grateful to have this time with you. What an honor it's been. Thank you for watching. We pray it's been a blessing in your life as well. We'll see you next time on Life Today. Tomorrow on Life Today, Robert Morgan helps you calm your anxiety through simple daily habits to help you fight against worry. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.